Hello and welcome to the Deception Tips Podcast, where you will learn amazing cues to detect deceit that will help you read people like never before. I'm your host, Spencer Kaufman. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 62 of the Deception Tips Podcast. Thanks again for listening. This is very important to both you and me. I love it that you are continuing to listen to the Deception Tips Podcast, that you are learning more and more about reading people and detecting deception so that you can spot lies and never be deceived again. This is super awesome because there is so much deception out there. Everybody is trying to take advantage of somebody else or get ahead, and they really tend to do that, whether they mean to or not, at other people's expense. So if you can read these little hidden signs and understand body language and interpret the behavior and understand when someone is lying and when they are telling the truth, then you will be much better off and much more secure and able to tell when someone is trying to take advantage of you. Last time we spoke of a deception tip that was related to one that was 40 episodes prior, so kind of cool there. We talked about guessing answers, how when a liar is not really giving you anything, they're not saying much, they may not be talking at all, they're really kind of being stubborn, probably just sitting in the chair being very uncooperative, not talking, maybe not even looking at you, probably have their arms folded, their legs crossed, all kinds of stuff that you can just see that you need to kind of pry them open. And what this is, is you can kind of get a list or a different suspicion where you may have narrowed it down to five or ten different options. Now, typically, this is when somebody is hiding something, so they're hiding something somewhere, and you need to find out the answers. It's not like a story as in what happened. It's more of where did you put XYZ? Where is the bomb hidden? Where is my cell phone? Those kinds of things. So you would do this by taking them and sitting them down, they're being uncooperative, and you are going to start guessing answers. So you're going to suggest or guess the possible outcomes of the situation. I bet it's over here because you do X, Y, Z, and you're going to watch their body language and their reactions. Anything that is anger or something like that is going to be more accurate. If it's a smile or contempt, or something that shows what we call duping delight, then you know you're on the wrong track because they're happy that they're fooling you. But if they get upset about it, or angry, or if they hold their breath, or something like that, then you know that you're on the right track because they're mad you're close to discovering the correct answer. Now remember, this one was related to episode way back 40 ago, Actually, now it would be 41 ago, but it was episode 21, Suggesting Answers. Now, Suggesting Answers is similar to Guessing Answers, but in this one, you are going to be suggesting the correct answer. Well, you don't know it's correct, but you're going to suggest one after another, or you're going to have a list of several of them, and you could run your finger up and down the list and watch the person and their face and their breathing, and their eyes, their mouth, and you're going to see that when you suggest the correct answer, that they will hold their breath, or they'll freeze, or they'll be surprised for a split second. So these tips really go hand in hand, because in episode 21, Suggesting Answers, it was more about how they're going to freeze, their mouth will be in an O shape, they're going to be kind of surprised that you got the answer. And in episode 61, It's how they're going to hold their breath for a split second when you got or guessed the correct answer. So they're very, very similar. They play, you're going to probably see all of them is in a whole cluster of behaviors when this happens because usually when someone is being deceptive and they're not budging at all, they're not even speaking, and a target can come out and say, I know exactly where it is, and they can give a few different options, and then all of a sudden they land on the correct one. The liar is going to be so shocked, so surprised, like, how did they do that? Are they reading my mind? What is going on? Because typically, the liar is thinking about where they hid whatever object. And everything you say, whether it's this or this, 
they're thinking yes or no. A cool game to try with this real quick, and then we're going to dive into the deception tip for today. A cool game to try with this, I've mentioned it before, is by using a deck of cards. Get a deck of cards out and have somebody pick a card, but do not give them the card. Just kind of fan them out, have them select a card. Better yet, don't even show them, just have them think of a card. Then you can take and start narrowing down the choices. Is the card red or black? Red or black? And you can watch their body language. Okay, it must be a red card. You can see, okay, did they smile? Are they contempt? What is it? Are they angry? Okay, no. Okay, it's a black card. Then you can continue. All right, it must be a club or a spade. Bing, bang. Then you can go on to high, low cards. Above eight, lower than eight. Face card, no. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, okay, it's probably a two. All right, it's the two of uh, clubs. I got it, two of clubs. And they're going to be like, oh, my gosh, how did you do that? But you can play that little game with them to practice reading people and watching for those expressions because those expressions are going to be the same on that scenario and in a real life situation where you are looking for the truth. So practice that and I hope you do it a lot and you will notice that you will be able to read people a lot better after practicing that. All right, here we go. Today, deception tip number 62. Some liars often say their statements twice with their voice rising the second time around. Here it is again. Deception tip 62. Some liars often say their statements twice with their voice rising the second time around. Now, this is very important. Many people say their statements twice. They're not necessarily all lying. In fact, when you think of uh, popular preachers or pastors or people giving speeches or lectures or anything like that, Pay attention to them. Now, not everybody does this, but some people do. And oftentimes, when they do, they do it way too often, and it becomes very annoying. When they continue to say their statement twice, their point, whenever they are bringing up something, they're talking, then they're wrapping up a sentence, they'll say the end of the sentence, then they pause, then they say it again. Then they continue on, they say their sentence, they pause, then they say it again. And they do this over and over and over. They are saying their statements twice for emphasis, to try to push it into your mind. And of course it does, but really what ends up happening if they do it too often is you forget the message and you start realizing that it was so annoying and you hate it when they talk and whatever and you become frustrated with it. So those who do it right, the message is impacted and you do remember it a lot more. But this is not that. We are going to talk about how when they lie and say it a second time for emphasis and their voice rises because of the change in pitch and the nervousness and etc., all of that, but we will talk a lot more about it coming up right after this. Want to be a lie spotter but don't have time to do the research? Check out Spencer Kaufman's Deception Tips blog and learn how to detect deception. You'll be an expert at detecting lies. That's Spencer Kaufman. Dot com. Welcome back to Deception Tip episode number 62, where we are talking about how liars' voices may rise the second time around when they repeat their statement. Now, it's important to note that most people repeat their statements when trying to get a point across in, in a speech or a lecture or a sermon or something like that doesn't necessarily mean they're lying because they're saying it for emphasis. Usually, those types of people, their voice will go down. Their voice will go down. It's kind of like that. They say it in a sentence, and then they stop. They say it again for emphasis. They stop. They say it again for emphasis. You get the idea. That's not a lie. Those are repeating something to let it sink in because it's important in their message or their speech or their lecture or whatever they're trying to do. This is a lying behavior here where they're going to say it a second time and their voice will go up, kind of like that. So where were you yesterday? Oh, I was at the farm. I was at the farm. So it raises in pitch. Why does it raise in pitch? The reason is because when they're nervous, they're tense, 
most of the time when people are nervous, the tension in their body is going up. Okay, that is just natural. It's hand in hand. I shouldn't have even have to say it. And after this, I mean, we've talked about it many, many times, practically in every episode. So you know that when people lie, they're under a tremendous amount of stress and tension. Okay, this stress and tension does all kinds of things to the body. One of them, when they're stressed, it has the diaphragm or in the lungs, they all kind of tense up, contract. In addition, sometimes the vocal cords or the throat, the larynx, all of that can kind of tense or shrink or contract, whatever word you want to put with it. When people are tense, that stress comes through, the vocal cords can tighten up. That means their voice will rise because there's less surface area and they're tighter. It's like with a rubber band. If you have a rubber band and it's really loose, it makes a lower sound, if any sound at all. Well, we, it's really low. We can't hear it. You tighten it up. Now the sound gets higher and higher and higher until eventually we can't hear it on the other end. Just like a guitar string. You can tighten and tighten and tighten and eventually it'll snap. But either way, when vocal cords are tighter, the sound is higher. Typically when someone is saying a lie and they're repeating their statement, their vocal cords are tighter, which causes the raise in voice. One thing to note about this is the voice raising. Now, voice raising is something that can happen even if they don't say their statements twice. For example, you can be on the phone with someone and you can be asking them certain questions. Typically, you may be on the phone with your teenager. Well, what are you doing tonight? Where are you going? Are you going home? And whatever they say, yeah, I'm going over to my friend's house to watch the game or whatever to study and they may only say it once but you may be able to hear their voice rise at the end of the sentence they didn't say the statement twice but their voice rose at the end of that sentence in the English language culture typically when your voice rises at the end of a sentence you're asking a question why does the voice rise well it rises because they're unsure you're uncertain you're going to so-and-so today, right? Your voice went up at the end. Why did it go up? Because I wasn't sure where you're going. So I'm asking you. I'm getting information on something I don't know. So there's the key. I don't know. When you ask someone a question, such as your teenager on the phone or something like that, and their voice rises at the end of their sentence, and they're not asking a question, it means they don't know. What don't they know? Well, they don't know whatever they just said. That means they're lying. So if they say, well, I'm going over to Bobby's house to study, and you hear that voice rise at the end, you can be pretty sure that they may not be going over to Bobby's house to study. In fact, you may want to ask them again and see how they react or question it or push it, because usually when voice rises at the end of a sentence in the English language culture, it means there's a question that they don't know. Now, if they repeat themselves and it's fine the first time and it rises the second time, now you know something's going on because they have contracted their vocal cords to make it go up. The unconscious mind is allowing some leakage to happen. The conscious mind doesn't know what's happening because it thinks it's going on for emphasis. It thinks that things are all good, we're getting away with a lie, but the unconscious knows, hey, I'm letting a sign of leakage get out. I'm getting past the conscious. Hopefully someone will see it and the truth will be exposed because the unconscious is very, very truthful. In fact, it is so truthful it doesn't even know how to lie. It is the utmost truth. Okay? The conscious is self-serving and wants to get ahead. It is looking out for number one. It is preservation. It is getting out of things. It is covering things up to avoid trouble, avoid pain, seek pleasure. Turns out Freud was right in that instance. That is what the conscious wants to do all the time. The unconscious is leaking signs. So what you need to do is pay attention to these signs. Get them to move from your unconscious to your conscious so that you can learn to see them and recognize them so that you will be able to know when someone is lying to you. I want to thank you for listening to the Deception Tips podcast. I really hope that you'll share it with your friends, subscribe to the feed, check out the Deception Tips videos, the blog, and take a look at the books I have available. 
And as always, tune in next week for a new Deception Tip.